just when you thought the drought imagery from 2018 had been exhausted in terms of new quote unquote archaeology and previously unrecorded monuments. Well, along comes Apple and it updates its Apple Maps imagery with some very high quality image imagery that appears to have been taken in June of 2018 uh, when drought conditions were making a lot of crop marks visible. So I'm going to take you on a little tour. I'm going to show you some of the uh, major finds in the Brunabonia area and a few from outside the Brunabonia area in the general Boyne Valley region. Um, very exciting stuff, I think you'll agree. In the past week, I have found using uh, the Apple Maps imagery, I've lost count, but it's well over 100 monuments and possible monuments and archaeological features. All of these have been reported to the National Monument Service and I await further information on whether they will be added to the database as archaeology. I'm here at Brunabonia. Of course, those of you who, who know your stuff will know that that's where we are. There's Newgrange there, look. And you can see that uh, during the drought, the pits of the pit, Newgrange Pit Circle, excavated by David Sweetman in the 1980s, are visible. You can see the tourists milling around the mound there. It, uh, it got very dry and parched. Anyway, I want to show you, of course, the biggest finds were in this field at Newgrange Farm. There's Drone Henge. Well, the one we call Drone Henge, discovered by myself and Ken Williams on the evening of Tuesday, the 10th of July, 2018, at 8.47 p.m. on my drone screen. And, of course, the, uh, the discovery and the lead up to it and the aftermath of it and some interpretation of it um, are featured in my new book, Drone Henge, the story behind the remarkable discovery at Newgrange available on mythicalireland.com and in all good bookshops have to get the plug in just here to its east you can see the uh, hook enclosure to its west uh, site lp1 and that stands for low profile one this site was revealed by the instar project published their results in 2010 and to the east did i say west yeah west to the east of drone henge site p an embanked henge and a very impressive, um, a very impressive one. Very similar in design, drone hinge with this little annex to the east. And there's an entrance here, or there appears to be an entrance on the western side of Site B. This porch feature at drone hinge is very interesting. Further north in the field, the pit complex. Archaeologist Connor Brady believes this is archaeology. Archaeologist Tom Condit from the National Monument Service believes it's vegetation marks. So it'll be interesting in the future to see if there's any excavation there or anything that might reveal whether they're natural markings or archaeology. In the northeast of the field, the four-poster that was discovered by Ken Williams and the arcs of the Great Palisade. And you can see the individual posts, a giant fence and that runs through this field where you can pick up part of it here on the imagery. And then into the next field where to its north is this Frankfurter or a pill or capsule shaped, a more, what's believed to be a mortuary enclosure. Some sort of an ancient roadway here. That's site A1 there. Site A, the mound with the henge around it. And again, the henge with the annex to the east, an interesting structure. Down here we can see uh, the Riverside Henge beginning to appear again. This is a discovery of Ken Williams in the immediate aftermath of the discovery of Drone Henge in the same week, Site B along the floodplain. Anyway, uh, just uh, in the last few days, I have I think I've discovered a new monument here that we hadn't seen before and is unrecorded. And that is an enclosure or, or what might be a ring fort, because I think there's a rectangular structure in the middle, which may be a habitation. Uh, so some sort of a an enclosure or a farmstead or a ring fort uh, that, uh, as I say, has been reported to National Monuments. In the same field is the destroyed or the partly destroyed Cairn site U, Passage Tomb. Um, and to the south is the standing stone here and there's another one here. 
You can also see, I think, I hope you can see, the uh, faint outline of the site identified by Instar called LP1, Low Profile Site 1. And that showed up quite nicely in the LiDAR. That, that's a probable henge. Uh, old field boundaries uh, can be found uh, in lots of the fields. So now I'm just going to show you some of the sites that I've found. There are some at Staline on the south side of the river. I'm not sure whether these are all... They're not recorded on the National Monuments um, Historic Environment Viewer online. That does not mean that they haven't been reported uh, for Bruna Bonia. So we'll see in time. There's this sort of field or enclosure. Uh, a couple of ring ditches there. There's another ring ditch here. Uh, and... Uh, some sort of interesting enclosures here. Now, in retrospect, I think those enclosures um, are visible or were visible uh, previously and were recorded in the Instar report. Now, I just have to find my bearings. I'm trying to do all this from memory. There's the site queue, the Douth Henge. Uh, you have to, you know, most of the archaeology is visible in crop fields, not in grass fields. Although the the, dr the drought did get severe enough that towards the middle of July last year there were there were uh, archaeological features visible in the grass. Uh, of course, an, an example of that is the, the, the Great Palisade there at uh, Newgrange Farm. Um, if we move a little bit to the north, I did find a couple of ring ditches and other features which we'll talk about. This is a recorded mound, possible mound, but there's what appears to be a ditch around it, so that's I've reported that. I'm just looking here. This this is an interesting feature in Douth Townland. There may be a ditch here. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is archaeology or just natural markings. Again, report. I'll let the archaeologists make up their mind on these things. A couple of possible enclosures here. Um, just trying to find where is this? The Slain Road. Um, there were a couple of ring ditches in this area. There's one there. Hope you can see that. And there's one there. Um, up towards Townley Hall, there were some interesting features. There's an enclosure there, and there's a rectangular enclosure with what looks to be a circular or a, a subcircular uh, addition, and maybe a field system there. Again, that's reported to National Monuments. Um, some features here, which may be enclosures. Again, I reported those. Oh, sure, I report everything. As soon as I find it, it's like, and here's one here. Um, not entirely sure that that's recorded or not, so forgive me if it is. Um, and then over... Um, yes, yeah, so these are recorded. All this is recorded. This is very interesting. This is a henge, the Monk Newtown henge, which on which a, a, a part excavation was done in, I think, the 1970s. The only henge in the Boyne Valley area to be excavated. It's a very interesting... Uh, circular field system around that um, but I believe all that stuff is recorded and ha have, having been seen before if we go down to Nouth and head west of Nouth to Cruban it's a very interesting feature here in the field which could be a series of man-made pits or post holes now because only part of the field is 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 dried out I'd love to I'd love to have seen images of this tour three weeks later I'd love to have had the time after the discovery of Drone Henge to fly over all the fields of Brunabonia but I just didn't because it's interesting I've reported this anyway let the archaeologists make up their mind but there appear to be two arcs of pits or post holes here and, and, and several more so it could be archaeology and in 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 view of its proximity to Nouth and its location uh, in the Brunabonia area one suspects that it could be archaeology. This site down here is an enclosure that was a part excavated by Connor Connor Brady of DKIT a number of years ago, and um, I showed him this image uh, today, and he says that some of these features were indeed picked up on on the uh, geophysics. Um, but that's the first time I've actually seen any hint of this site on aerial imagery. The quality of this imagery is fantastic. Uh, it's really highly detailed. Uh, better than anything that I've seen on Google Earth. 
Uh, in fact, you can't see drone hinge on Google Earth. There's only one image on Google Earth where drone hinge is visible, and it is um, very disappointing because it was taken, I think, in April of this year when the the crop marks had faded out into oblivion. Here's a, a, a site. I'm um, not sure which of these Ken Williams discovered one of these sites at Gill Gilltown, opposite the uh, the drone hinge field. This is on on high land overlooking the uh, the floodplain of the Boyne. Anyway, um, I wanted to show you. I mean, I found in this region, I have found, as I say, probably all told about 125 monuments in the past uh, four or five days. Now I'm looking for one of the most impressive, if I can find it. Was that? Uh, of course, I can't remember exactly where it is. The townland is called Coral Walls. And it's in Meath, and it looks like it's uh, what one might call a, yeah, it's it's not it's not a million miles away from the the Bellius Town Racecourse. Um, it's what one might call a uh, here we go here it is a deserted medieval village. This is a a, a, a a complex consisting of a number of enclosures and you know field systems. I mean. It appears to extend over this whole area here. In fact, there's a couple more enclosures there. And that's one of the most complex um, medieval sites I've seen. Now, I'm assuming it's medieval, of course. Um, Archaeology will, will in the future maybe prove or disprove that. Um, and this, again, is completely unrecorded archaeology. I'm going to take you all the way over to Kells in County Meath. Uh, for some sites that I really, really liked. I remember, and this is ironic because I remember one day driving out of Kells, a lot of the time when I'm coming from Loch Crew through Kells, I would drive the back road to Kilberry and Slane, over to Slane Castle, and back to Drogheda that way. But some one day I took it upon myself to drive out the old Dublin road and onto the M3. And I was driving out there and I, t I noticed these big tillage fields and I said to myself, I think this is this year, summer of this year. I said, I wonder whether there's archaeology in there. Well, take a closer look. In this field is a complex of ring ditches. There are six that I can see. One, two, three, four, five, six. That little one down there near to the road, just across the road from the, the graveyard in Kells. Um, and individually reported to the National Monuments. Um, yeah, very nice. And in the field down here, near the roundabout, um, some very interesting features. I mean, that's probably a ring ditch. That's some sort of an enclosure, maybe a ring fort. Um, a sub-rectangular, quasi-square-shaped enclosure. And then a very, very large oval enclosure. Now, the oval enclosure does coincide with a demeanor feature. Uh, so that's maybe what it is, but it may be that the, the mean feature, um, you know, was, was um, let's say, constructed around something that had been there previously. I'm not sure. Uh, this is a, a recorded uh, monument. I'm not sure it's a barrow or a mound. So that was one of the nicer, uh, the nicer finds. Uh, let me just think for a second. I found stuff out along the coast at Laytown. Um uh, Cor I think the town under here is Corballis. Again, you know, you see an enclosure there with an opening in it to the southeast, another one there with an opening. I'm not entirely sure if all of these are my finds or they're all might be recorded at a ring ditch there. I know, I'm getting carried away. I should be comparing this to the documents that I've compiled for National Monuments ring ditches there. Four of them. One, two, three, four. Uh, and a, uh, another ring ditch and an in possible enclosure there. Um, oh yeah, there's literally, literally stuff all over the place. Um, in my own hometown of Drogheda, uh, close to the new Siena convent out the 20s, not the old Siena convent. There are a couple of enclosures in a field here that are unrecorded. One here appears to be a double concentric enclosure and another one here and a D-shaped enclosure here. And just beside the Plunkett's GAA pitch in Mel... I found what's likely to be a ring fort. That's not recorded. Just against the Slane Road there. 
There's the football pitch, the Plunkets. Uh, where else? In Tully Allen, Townland. Um, do, 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 yeah, there are several enclosures here that I found that are unrecorded. There's another one there. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's not that clear. And another one here. Um, I, I found sites straddling the motorway uh, along the Hill of Rath. You'll see some of those there. And I think there was a couple of ring ditches. Um, if I can find them now without referring to the documentation, I can't immediately find them offhand. They're in here somewhere. Oh, yeah, they're there. Two ring ditches. And close to Mellifont Abbey, uh, we'll just whisk up the way a little bit. Uh, Mellifont is, Anthony, pay attention. Mellifont is this way. Yeah, there's uh, Mellifont Abbey there. At the townland of Hercule, there are some nice features. These lovely double enclosures, possibly a triple enclosure. Certainly, it certainly looks like two enclosures there. And look at the detail that becomes visible. Of course, a lot of that's natural, but you can see how this raised land is really drying out and beginning to parch up and of course dug out features uh, retain the moisture a little bit better so the crops growing out of them look a little bit healthier and greener uh, yes here we go complex of enclosures only this one here is recorded there are possibly several more there's one here there's one here and this is probably one here um, the the straight lines are probably more recent field systems but there are older I think field systems there as well so that's all been reported and hopefully um, that will be recorded in the near future look at, look, at, look at how you know the sort of things that you can see in the fields there's a series of enclosures uh, in Donna Kearney that are recorded but are showing up in fabulous detail uh, here look at that isn't that fantastic? Look. And of course, the thing about sites like this is that the East Mead area is developing fast. All of these developments. I mean, you're going to see all these fields built on, I'd say, over the next uh, 10 or 20 years. Um, just trying to remember where else I found. Oh, all over the place. I'm like an excited child here, so I am. This is what I've been doing. And I, I started using Google Earth years ago to find archaeological well alignments between sites not particularly to discover new archaeology the, the the there's no doubt that the drought imagery from the past um uh from last year and some of the imagery from spring this year has been very helpful in terms of finding um previously unrecorded archaeology yeah i i know what i want to show you i want to show you up towards fornox there is a site there are a series of henges in the Fornox Road. Uh, Fornox Road. Look, I'm reading what it's saying there. In the Fornox area. So, just zoom in there. There's Fornox Mound. And there are two other mounds here. One of which was excavated and one un unexcavated. This is part of a complex. Uh, you may not be able to see it because it doesn't actually show up very well here. There's a henge here. There's another henge here at Mcnanstown. You can see that, I'm sure. And uh, the remnants of a very large henge here at Heath Town. So there's part of a bank and part of a bank here. And there is a bank, or there was, a, when Leo Swan used to take aerial photos, there was a connecting bank. This is documented in Geraldine Stout's paper about the embanked enclosures of the Boyne region. This one, if if, if it was a complete um, enclosure, it was about 200 metres in diameter, a huge thing. But just to the northwest of Heath Town, I have found, I made a video the other day about a, a, a possible enclosure in this field, but a, oh boy, have things moved on since then. I found a series of enclosures up here. Look, there's one there. That may or may not be an enclosure, and that may or may not be an enclosure. There appears to be a series of enclosures uh, here at Heath Town, just immediately northwest of the remains of the Heath Town Henge. Fascinatingly, um, uh, two sites that aren't mentioned in Geraldine Stout's paper, but which I was very interested in, um, in in terms of, um, sorry, I just need to get my thoughts together here. In terms of hinges and possible hinges, there are two more in the region which are very interesting. I'm going to show you those now. So I want to show you here the remains of two ring ditches. I found those on Google Earth, and they are recorded. I found those earlier this year. And here at Herbertstown, um, 
this mound has a folly on it and that mound may may well be a refashioned passage tomb a part of the Fornox complex the first of the possible hinges is this one here at Herbertstown um, you can see I hope um, uh, certainly the northern arc of it so that's a possible possible remnant of a hinge it's certainly big enough it's a huge enclosure now Anthony try and remember where the other one is for a second here it's up towards again back towards Bellia's town I need to zoom out and find the race course yes and it's down here oh this may be one that's actually better visible on Google Earth yes it is you can just about I hope make out what may be the southern portion of it but there are better versions of this in Google Earth uh, and again that may be another <coughs> pardon me of the hinges of this region um, just thinking out loud here before I finish there's definitely something I see yeah, there's the the Curra walls uh, possible deserted medieval village um, I'm just trying to think was there anything else significant that I wanted to show you before we finish I mean there's examples of isolated sites and small sites all over the road I found some at uh, Baymore um, so here's Baymore this is um, where the excavations were carried out by the, the Stouts this year uh, looking for a, um, a Cistercian uh, settlement there and some interesting finds from that excavation uh, there are several uh, unrecorded features in this area um, yeah sometimes you see stuff that's not altogether too clear and you think you know if I could get another image from two or three weeks later I might be able to see something and there was one uh, here down the Cooper Hill Road yeah there that one there was unrecorded as well <coughs> So lots and lots and lots and lots of archaeology. I've been scouring it now for several days. I don't doubt that further discoveries will be made. I hope I've made the most significant of them. Um, I had to compile uh, uh, documents um, with, you know, descriptions of the features, locations in terms of townlands, county, etc. And then grid coordinates, uh, precise grid coordinates for them um, so that they could be... Um, precisely located oh yeah there's an enclosure here at Hayestown um that's just south of the Boyne there uh, uh near Broad Boyne Bridge or Stacallan um and that is unrecorded and is also visible um in Google Earth fascinating stuff I know you're gonna say look that's archaeology there I don't not sure that it is I think that might be a demean feature there's a an enclosure there to be honest at this stage some of the stuff I can't remember whether it was recorded or not and, and whether I had reported it or not. Possible ring ditch there might be a demean feature though. I think that's Bow Park House. Um, oh yeah back to Oldbridge the Battle of the Boyne site. Now a lot of this stuff is recorded. Ring ditches on the lands at the Battle of the Boyne site and uh, a ring fort or, or maybe a, a large ring ditch there. Um, I think there might be some more something there that might be an enclosure I don't think I reported that though some of these are just you know to be a, a question mark over them um, as to whether they're archaeology or not of course I probably should report everything and let the archaeologists make up their minds whether they're going to record them or not you know but look if if you go north you'll see that there's there's a particular swathe of imagery and the imagery north of this is all green and it's much harder to see archaeology in the tillage fields it's this parched imagery and if you go south you'll see that it extends a certain distance to the south and then um, it turns lush and green again so it was uh, it's, it's quite a swathe though and, and it, it covers quite a distance towards the west uh, which is why I was able to go over to Kells etc did have a look in the area around Hill of Tara but that's not covered by the drought imagery I did also have a look at uh, the La Crew area of course uh, but a lot of you will know that there's little or no tillage uh, in the area around the La Crew complex there's uh, Kern Ban uh, there's Kern L and Kern D 
there's uh, Sleeve Nicalia, Kieran T, um, Patrickstown, etc. So you're looking for tillage fields and you'll find that they're in short supply in that area. So wasn't able to see anything. But anyway, maybe some of you looking on Apple Maps will find something that I haven't seen. And maybe you'll get your name on a monument in the uh, in the database, which would be nice, you know. Um, people are getting fed up with me at this stage. I'm sure national monuments are throwing their eyes up to heaven, you know, every time they're, every time they see me or every time they see an email from me. Now, there's uh, Headfort to mean, um, again, this is close to the sites at Kells. Can't remember uh, whether I, can't remember whether I, Ah, sure, let's have a look. Just give me a second here. Um, oh yeah, no, no, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for Google Earth. I'm looking for the Historic Environment Viewer. Um, here, who knows? I'm sure this stuff is recorded and I'm sure that I've seen it already. I'm sure that I didn't miss it. But anyway, we'll have a look. Okay, just need to think think what I'm doing here. Okay. So there's the golf club. Uh so we're going northeast of the golf club. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, go away. That's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, historic environment viewer. Uh, what townland is that? Said in Roth. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I had, to, I had to ask myself whether I had uh, seen these already. Should have looked familiar. Yes, I have. I have re reported those to National Monuments. They're unrecorded. So anyway, there you go. There is a brief a brief taster of what I've been doing, scouring the landscape for archaeological features in the fields, zooming in and out and panning around the place like an idiot. But anyway, it's been worthwhile. Um, the count is, is well over 100, and that's on top of the 100-plus monuments I found in Google Earth in the spring of this year. But of course, the largest and the greatest... Um, the one that I don't think will ever be topped, not by me anyway, is the discovery of this giant henge on the floodplain of the Boyne, 700 metres um, south-south-west of Newgrange. Drone henge. And with Ken Williams, the discovery of several other monuments and features at Bruna Bonia that um, radically change our, our whole impression of the site and the complex. And of course it becomes more and more and more fabulously interesting. And of course provides um, material for archaeologists to study for years and years and years into the future without any ag exaggeration. So there it is. And this is, uh, I reckon, in June when the, when the crop was really starting to, to feel the effects and you'll actually see that the parching is a little bit worse in the northern part of the field. There is a, a sort of a slope here in this part of the field. So this, this part is on a sort of a higher terrace than this part. But uh, it was beginning to dry out at this stage. Just looking for the, there's a sort of like a grand entrance or some sort of a gateway feature that looks like it might have been a grand entrance to the whole complex from the river. And you might have seen a video on my YouTube channel, uh, my Mythical Ireland YouTube channel, which was recorded along the river here, um, talking about the possibility that the people who were visiting for whatever festivities and events took place here in the late Neolithic might have moored their boats along the river here and, and entered into the whole complex. Anyway, read more about that in the book, in the, in the Drone Henge book. In the meantime, uh, you never know. Have a look around your local area uh, in Apple Maps and Google Earth and or Google Maps and Bing Maps and maybe you'll see something that is not recorded 
uh, that might be archaeology, report it uh, to National Monument Service, and you never know, you might get uh, you might get fame or infamy or something along those lines. Thanks a million for watching. I'm Anthony Murphy.